you and sing names and bring sing, sing praise unto his name. Call him names, he's the king of all kings. He alone is the rock of all ages. He's the reason why you live, he's the reason why you breathe. Father, we worship you. Lord, we ask to take the eminent control of today's service. Holy Spirit, we ask, O oh Lord, that you speak through all the speakers, O oh Lord. All the leaders and ministers you shall use in today's service. Your prayers shall be felt like never before. As many, Lord, who have come unto your prayers, heavenly body, Lord, you shall take off the body, Lord, no matter what space they are going through it. Be it financial, be it physical, emotional, spiritual. Lord, we ask you to take the eminent control. Holy Spirit, take your place. Holy Spirit, take your place. We welcome you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Be thou exalted, King of all glory. Be thou exalted, the mighty man in battle. Be thou exalted, lily of the valley. Be thou exalted, rock of all ages. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for a day like this. We thank you for a day, Lord, which you've been sent to orchestrate our footsteps. We thank you for a day that you've been sent to take your throne, O Lord. Father, we worship you. For our families, we say thank you. For our lives, we say thank you. For our jobs, we say thank you. For the food we eat, the air we breathe, we say thank you, Lord. You are the reason I live. You're the one for me. Take the aim.
whatever he says he will do and that is what he keeps doing thank you lord for being a covenant keeping god we give you all the praise of god hallelujah Covenant keeping God You are a covenant keeping God
joyful night unto the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Yes. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Yes. Oh, yes. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Oh, yes. yes. your handkerchief if you have one.
finally. I can hear you say the Lord has done it finally. The Lord has done it finally.
Amen. My response to my lover's love. The pain of this lover appears so fading, yet his scribble on the wall is so apparent. Although it takes a few to read his message and a few to understand its meaning, he quotes in secrets as he plays hide and seek. Only his lovers can search out his intent. Oh, that my eyes may be enlightened to read your heart and my ears be helped to pick every of your whispering. For in the midst of many thunders you speak silently. And at the back bank of the still water you turned like a crumbling mountain. Your communication, communicative signals has remained unpredictive. And your arousal level tends toward no definite emotions. Only your lovers can truly search out your very intent. Oh, that I be among your king's daughters. So that with the kisses of your mouth, you will show me some love. I love to love you. And to love all that you love. I heard that your love is sweeter than wine. But I want to be totally lost in its well and be intoxicated in its content. Just set me in mood so that I can be locked up in loving you. For he takes your true lovers to absolutely love any of your maidens. Oh, that you bless me with great judgment. That my expression of love will be in the similitude of what you did to your church. Giving myself up totally until to the point of death. That your maiden may be lost by every of my moves. Teach me, master lover. Teach me my love. Teach me to love my brethren just like you do. Help me to love without dissimulation. To harbor which, which is able and to cleave to only the good. For you expect your true lovers to be circumspect as they relate with all of your creatures. That my mind will be gleaned from Babylon. Not follow after the heathen whose definitions of love is perverse. I want to love you more. I want to love your style of love. And I want to love all you love. Help me to love you more. My love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you happen to be in church, praise the Lord. If Jesus is your Savior, praise the Lord. We are the Teenage Church and we have three presentations. Please be blessed as you listen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Okay, today we'll be talking about intimacy with God and relationship. Intimacy with God is available to everyone. It is accessible to you as God promises. But of course, intimacy is not part of a relational. There are many ingredients to intimacy, and each intimate relationship we have has a different recipe. Common to all of them is trust. We can't be intimate with a person we don't trust. The more we trust them, the more we let them get to us. We have two relationships. We have physical relationship and spiritual relationship. Physical relationship is relationship with man, such as our parents, friends, family, and relatives. But spiritual relationship is relationship with our one and only God, our heavenly father, the man who created, the person who created us today. Without him, we could have never made it to earth, stuck us of being alive today. We could have not been seated all here looking beautiful today. Without him, we are nothing. He is a one and only father, and therefore we should have a solidified and unbreakable relationship with him. Romans 5 verse 8 says, 
But God shows his love for us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Scripture shows us that God is intimate with those who trust him. The more we trust God, the more intimately we come to know him. A felt distance from God is often due to disruption in trust, such as sin or disappointment. As Christians, we want to experience intimacy with God. With the psalmist, we say, for me, it is good to be near to God. Psalm 73, verse 28. Intimacy is more than knowledge. One common mistake is thinking that nearness to God can be achieved through knowledge accumulation. Now, of course, to intimately know God, we must know crucial things about God. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John 8 verse 32. God wants intimacy with you and Christ has done all the hard work on the cross to make that possible. Any relationship that is not founded on a solid rock will crumble. This should take priority and it will put right all your personal relationship. If we have a strong relationship with God, when men or other people fail you, you will never fail you. You can always go to him. He's always going to accept you with uh, open arms. Christ is your firm foundation, a solid rock you can build your trust and build your relationship on. As encapsulated in Psalm 18 verse 2, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Revelation 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and hit with him and him with me. God loves you and is at the door of your heart, knocking. I allow him in your life and your life will never remain the same. God bless you. Back at home in Nigeria, I was very rich. I had many cars. I was the manager of the bank. Now that I've come here, things aren't going the way I thought they would. I'm doing, I'm doing care. I'm cleaning toilets, something that someone like me shouldn't be doing. Why? Yes, I know. The, I used to do well in the past, but now I have to face reality. Look forward. Um, look forward. March forward. Look out for Jesus and know that it's the authority and finisher of our faith. I have a message from our Creator, <clears throat> Jeremiah twenty-nine verse eleven. For I know the plans of you, said the Lord. There are plans of good and not for evil, to give you hope and a glorious end. Do not be dismayed, because our God is caring for us. And just let you know that our future is bright. Yes, we had a great past, but now we have to look at our future. We have to face our present and conquer our future. We have to look unto God, the author and finisher of our faith. And we have to pray. And indeed, all will be well. Then I can 
can whisper away what he said in the lights And he is my firm foundation My anchor won't be moved The storms make a life of my soul He's on fire with his word When listen to the sound The power on my lips Jesus has broken the curse And he has never lost a battle And he never will, he never will Oh, he never will, he never will and he never will, he never will And he is my faithful father Calling me out of the dark And I cannot whisper away What he said in the light And he is my firm foundation My soul is on fire with his word. So, so we listen, listen to, we listen to the sound of power on my lips. Jesus has broken the curse, and he has never lost a battle. Who are you? Who are you, great mountain? That you should not bow low Jesus defeated the darkness And he has never lost a battle We listen to the sound A power of my lips And Jesus defeated the darkness And he has never lost a battle we remember he has won the war. Jesus mighty overcomer, our defender has conquered. Christ redeemer, we remember he has won the war. Jesus mighty overcomer, our defender has conquered. We listen to the sound of power on my lips. And Jesus has broken the curse, and he has never lost a battle. Who are you? Who are you, great mountain? That you should not bow low. Jesus defeated the darkness, he has never lost a battle. With the one who has conquered it all, I'm sitting in heavenly places. With the one who has conquered it all, I'm seated in heavenly places. With the one who has conquered it all You name it, he overcame it 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 you name it, he overcame it. We listen to the sound of power on my lips. Jesus has broken the curse. He has never lost a battle. Who are you, great mountain? Should not bow low. Jesus defeated the darkness, 
and he has never lost a battle. And he never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. Fight, fight, fight. Must it not be fight? But I don't want to fight. Okay, as there's peace, we like it. Is it not good to be? Is, is it not good to have peace? Hey, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the marriage now. At least there should be fight. I should pack out, pack in, things like that. So what will make you, know? you enjoy the marriage is if I begin to fight you? Yes, now. I mean, At least I will break your phone, you know? What's things, happening? all those spices. What's happening, man? What's happening? He likes me too much. Ah. I don't understand. Small thing, he will say sorry. Small thing, he will say sorry. What type of marriage is that one? It's not um, my friends pack out, they pack in, they beg, then the whole family, you know? Things like that. I don't see it now. It doesn't so make want sense. Peace? Yes, I don't want peace. I want ah. war. I want war. I want war. I want war. Let there no, be war. Let, let, let peace ah. stay. Let peace stay. Let peace stay. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4 and verse 7. Mm. It says, And the peace of God, which has set all human understanding, we dwell in your hearts. We Pastor, stay. let me tell you. We have been on this matter for three days. My wife said we should schedule every Monday for fight, 9 to 10. Ah. Is, is there a bad idea? Just one day in a week. It's, I know. No, Spice now. No. Spices. The Lord does not dwell where there is no peace. Pastor, please let me tell you. There are six days where he will dwell. Just one day. No, no, no. The Lord does not dwell where there is no peace. You need peace. Let's stop it. Let's reduce our focus on what the word teaches us. On what the word says. Thank on you, Pastor. On what the word teaches us. That is what the, social media teaches us. That is exactly what I ask her. Where did you even hear this thing that we should be fighting safe? I personally chatted a pastor's wife. I say sometimes they fight. But they fight and the spices of their marriage. They, so, they will settle and things will so go. So, the way there is peace now, you don't want it. I don't want peace. I want war. Is it, is it too difficult to ask? Oh, yeah. Just put, just put your hand. Just put ah, your hand. I can't just, fight you. Is it too hard? We stand for peace. And this body wants to admonish every one of us that there's nothing that goes beyond the peace of God. It, no matter the storm that you might find yourself, we have come to speak peace in that situation. We will not encourage any form of violence. We will not encourage any form of riot. But we speak peace to every storm. And that will be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, maybe somebody here is troubled in your heart and you don't know what to do. I am here to remind you again that the love of the Father says, if he cares for the sparrow, he also cares for you. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Just to remind you once again. Why should I feel this courage? And why should the shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely and longing for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion And my constant friend is he His eye is on the sparrows And I know he will 
Just me His eyes on the sparrows And I know He watches me So I sing Because I'm happy And I sing Because I am free His eye is on the sparrows And I know He watches me I ask you once again Why should your heart be troubled? And why should the shadows come? And why should your heart feel lonely and longing for heaven and home? When Jesus is your portion, and a constant friend is he And his eyes on the sparrows And I know he watches you And he his eyes on the sparrows Yes, I know he watches you. And that's why I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I am free. His eye is on the spot. And I know he watches Be still and know That I am God Be still and know That I am God Be still and know That I and he says, I am the Lord that he left thee. I am the Lord that he left thee. I am the Lord that he left thee. His eyes home. Sparrows, and I know he watches me. Praise the Lord. Can we rise on our feet as we pray for our relationships? So today we want to pray for every singles and married. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18 said, It is not good for a man to be alone. So therefore God created an helpmate for and also the book of Isaiah 34, verse 16 says, None shall lack a mate. On that note, we are going to pray for every single in our midst, that the Lord should grant them all their heart desires and provide their mate for them. We are going to pray that every single, every single person in our midst that is, is of marriageable age, the Lord will bring to them their spouse. The Lord will provide for them. 
the appropriate person that will help them in fulfill, fulfilling their destiny. Those that are in confusion of who they want to settle with, those that are still in confusion of who they want to pick, that the Lord will help them to make their final decision. For those that don't even know what they want, that the Lord will help them to discover themselves. Because for you to pick the right person, you must first discover who you are. You must first discover yourself. You must first discover what is your purpose, that the Lord will help every single person in our midst to discover themselves, that the Lord will help them to discover who they are in order for them to pick the right person. Let's call on to God this morning that the Lord should please help our singles. Let's pray for every married couple in our midst that the Lord should bless their home. That the Lord should quench every trouble in every home. That the Lord should help them to be their, to be each other's friends. The Lord should help them to make good decisions for themselves and that that will benefit their kids. Let's pray against the spirit of divorce. The rate of divorce in our midst is becoming alarming. Let's pray that the Lord should quench every trouble, every decision of divorce in our homes, in the homes of our married couples. We want a kingdom marriage. We want a kingdom home. We want that beautiful home, a blissful one. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, it is possible. Let's pray that every trouble home, the Lord should speak peace into it this morning. We speak peace into every home in the name of Jesus. Let's call on to God that the Lord should bless every married couple that are still waiting on the Lord for the fruit of the womb. That the Lord should grant all that all that had desires. The Lord should bring that shout of joy into their home. Let's pray for those waiting unto God for that fruit of the womb. And let's pray for every home that needs to be fruitful financially. Whatever they need in order for their home to be peaceful and blissful. Let's pray that God should open financial doors unto every couple. Every single also. Because some men, the reason why they are not settled is because they are not financially stable. Let's pray for peace. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you because you've answered our prayers. Thank you because you are indeed the King, the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you because you've answered all our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we put our hands together for the youth church? We can do better. Let's celebrate Jesus in our lives. Amen. And we are using this opportunity to invite as many that are youthful in mind, in age, that you are welcome to the platform. It's a place to be. And the church has given us the opportunity to minister every alternate month. So it's a very wonderful thing. And we bless God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the life of our teenagers. That was a wonderful presentation. We pray that the Lord God Almighty 
We continue to bless their teachers with knowledge in Jesus' name. And the drama presentation was wonderful. The choir, we, that was wonderful. Let's celebrate Jesus. Amen. All right. This month, the youth um, church, we are looking at um, sex, love, and relationships. And um, we will have a very in-depth discussion on Friday. And we want to invite as many. Please, you will not regret coming. Let's come together. Let's talk about these things. Let's talk about it. Hallelujah. And is this coming Friday, 6.30? this same place. Amen. It's worth canceling your shift for. You won't regret it. You'll be blessed. And I pray that as we come, we'll all be blessed and the Lord will heal all our relationships in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to bless God. I want to thank the pastorate again for the opportunity they've given unto us. And I want to also appreciate my husband for his inputs during the time of putting this um, exhortation together. And um, I want to thank all the leaders in the youth arm as well. We pray that the Lord will not forsake us in Jesus' name. This morning, we want to look at a topic I titled, Godly and Healthy Relationships. Godly and Healthy Relationship. Amen. Amen. Father, we bless you. We give you all the glory. We thank and appreciate you for your love and kindness upon our lives, upon our relationships, even as married and as single. Lord, accept our hearts of thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that today's exhortation will be under her hope in heaven in the name of Jesus. Wherever we are suffering in our relationship, we pray you bring healings in your wings in the name of Jesus. That we will enjoy a blissful marriage, a blissful relationship in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. We have all experienced many challenges and difficulties that comes with any relationships. Be it when we are courting, as we are married, in our place of work. There are so many challenges that comes with it. And when it comes to getting married, many of us, we were not taught of how to have a healthy relationship. And some of us never grew up in a home with a solid relationship, where solid relationship were modeled. We, we didn't have that opportunity. But thankfully, God's words has shown us and is still showing us what relationship should, should look like, how he wants us to relate to our fellow men. It gives us the guidance on how to connect with others in many ways, that such relationship will bring blessings to us and bring honor to God. Hallelujah. Um, I want to, during the first service, I liken a relationship with a, with a tree. Media, please, can you? Yes, thank you. Relationship, I look at it as a tree. And if we look at what we have on our projection, we are going to see that Part of the tree is green, well nourished, well nurtured, and there is another part. I don't want to have two pictures. I can still connote what I want to. I can still po this can still portray what I want to. That's why I'm using this picture. It's just like a two-in-one picture. So if you look at the part that is very green, we are going to agree that it adds all it needs to flourish. It adds all it needs to look very beautiful and when we say it has all, all its needs first of all we need to look at the foundation we need to look at the soil if the soil is well nourished if it has all its nutrients then it can pass it across to the body amen praise the lord but if a tree does not have all its wants or all it needs to flourish that is how it's going to look at and that is the one looking dry and unhealthy. Hallelujah. I said in the, in, during first service, I said, when you see a tree that is blossoming, looking beautiful, looking radiant, and so also as a relationship, when you look at a relationship or you look at a couple, their marriage is blessed, they are happy, there are more to it. Amen. 
And I said, your input to that relationship will determine the output. If you give it all it needs, it will come out very beautiful. But if you don't have time to give, if you are not putting anything into it, you will also have an output. Hallelujah. The book of Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 10, it says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. And when my sister was ministering, she read the book of Genesis that God is the author of relationships. He likes to fellowship. He loves it. And he has also passed that across to us, the believer, the son. And he has given us the picture of how he wants us to relate when it comes to relationship. Praise the Lord. And no tree can stand or function properly without being rooted, without being rooted. So as a believer, we must have a very good soil, which is Christ. And we must be rooted in Christ. Once we are rooted, then every other thing can now follow. Hallelujah. And um, also for our singles, I just want to encourage us. Marriage is very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. That is, if we choose with the knowledge of God, with the understanding of God, without dwelling on our own understanding, is something very, very beautiful. So we need to sit and think, how do I choose right? What is God's intent for my relationship? Am I in the right relationship? If you are in a relationship with an ungodly person, with someone that does not know Christ, and you are yet to marry, this is a time to take plenty step aback. Not a step aback. Plenty step. And start from the beginning. Go to the altar of relationship and ask him, God, I need your guidance. And I pray the Lord will make it available in Jesus' name. This morning, we are going to look at four principles. And like I said, we can say four conditions or characteristics of godly relationship. Re godly relationship or relationship is a very broad topic. It's very, very large. But we just want to focus on the singles and married. Our relationship as, as married couple. Our relationship as spouse when courting as well. What are the things that can help our relationship? What are the characteristics? What are the things that can make the tree beautiful? What are the things we need to put? What are the inputs we need to look at to give us a beautiful outcome? Amen. The first one we want to look at is love. Amen. 1 John 4, 8 says, if you don't, he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. Praise God. Love. Like I said, there should be a foundation for every relationship. There is this song I love very much. It said, on Christ the solid rock I stand. For all other ground are seeking sand. We must find that love. We must understand that God is love. We must learn from him. When we understand what love is, that is when we will know how to showcase the love. Praise the Lord. So we need to know God for us to be able to love others. We need to study God, who is the love, for us to be able to tell others, I love you. And then we start to showcase and we, start, we will start to, um, to reciprocate that love. Amen. So, when we talk about love, it is very easy to say it. Praise God. It is very easy to say, I love you. It's very easy. It costs nothing. But the most important thing is showing that love, portraying that love physically. And that is where affection comes in. Amen. In Romans 12.10, it says, be kindly affectionate to one another. So when we are talking about love in a relationship, first of all, we now have the understanding that God is love and it should be our rock where we are building the foundation on so we can be rooted like that tree. Because if it's not rooted, that tree will not be able to tap into all the nutrients in the soil. So it needs to be rooted. 
so he can get all it needs. Now, when I now say affection, then we now, we now have to start showing that love. Because if you just tell me you love me and you don't show me, I will question it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. So we need to start showing that love to our partner. Be it in a relationship, yes, to be married. Be it in a, be it in a marriage right now. We need to show it. We need to express it. And how do we express it? We need to be creative. We need to look at our partner. We need to understand them. What can I do to make my partner understand this love that I have for him or her? Look at your partner and say, okay, if it's someone that cherish gifts, buy gifts. It costs nothing. Even a, you can get a very good gift for one pound. It's not how much the gift costs. It's the intent. Praise the Lord. It's the intent. If you buy me a pair of socks, I will appreciate it than going to the store and buy myself a pair of socks. I might not have the need for it now, but one day I will still revisit it and I'll remember, oh, this thing came from my partner or came from my husband. Praise the Lord. So we need to start showing it. If it's someone that loves to be admired, admire him or her. Amen. There was a time I would normally fight with my husband. Can't you see that I've made a new hair? He said, hey, but it's fine, but you did not tell me. Not until you tell me that it's beautiful. So don't allow anyone else to start admiring your spouse for you and say, oh, you have a beautiful hair. Oh, that dress is lovely. Oh, and you, the husband or the wife, you've not even said anything about it. No, we shouldn't do that. We should start admiring our partners ourselves. Don't leave the job for others to do for you. Praise the Lord. And if there is anything at all we see in others that we think is beautiful, we can extend it to our partner. Oh, I saw this person. I love his shirt. It looks beautiful. You can get the shirt for your partner. Oh, this hair is beautiful. You can encourage your partner to also have the shirt. I'm sorry, to have the hair. Praise the Lord. This morning, we want to do something. I think I still have time. Can we be on our feet, please? And if you have your husband or your wife in... Okay, if you are sitting beside your wife or your husband, can you raise up your hand? Sitting beside your wife or your husband. Thank you very much. That is very lovely. If your wife or husband is in the church and you are not sitting beside each other, please locate each other. Amen. Please locate each other. Sister Hope. I know couples that are here. Sister um, Dickiness, oh, come and sit beside um, Dickie Nodefa. Praise the Lord. We say we need to express love. We don't need to say it. If I ask us, how many of us have said I love you to, my, to our partner today or to our husband? I know that we'll, it will be few. And sometimes it's even difficult for us to even kiss our partner. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm not encouraging our singles to start kissing. Amen. Just to avoid temptation. But we can kiss ourselves with holy kiss. Timothy said, extend my greetings to my brothers with a holy kiss. You can pick yourself. You can hug yourself. Praise the Lord. Please, if you are beside your wife or your husband, I just need to, I need you to give that person a hug. Hug that person and tell that person, I love you. Amen. I love you. <laughs> Who says we can't have a beautiful home? Who says we can't have a beautiful marriage? We can say no to the devil because one of the things the devil attack is the marriage first. Once he's able to penetrate, then all other things start to give in. And I pray the Lord will give us enough love in our marriage in Jesus' name. I mentioned something again during the first service. I said the more affectionate you are, the more physical love you pour into your relationship, the stronger your relationship will be. Amen. The stronger your relationship will be. Just look at it from this picture. If you are married and you have a norms or a tradition of hugging yourself every morning or hugging yourself or kissing yourself every morning, by the time that partner, sorry, that wife or husband, sorry, I'm using partner a lot, a lot because that's what they use here. Sorry, just pardon me. When I say partner, you understand what I mean. Praise the Lord. If these are the things you practice with your partner, by the time that, that person, that spouse is not around, you will miss him or her. Praise the Lord. And separation cannot come in, nor divorce. Because there is a place of missing that person. When that place is there, 
you will crave for each other from time to time. Even if you are fighting, because the love is there, you will be looking for ways, solutions. How do I bring this war to an end? How do I make peace? Praise the Lord. And I pray the Lord will give us that grace in Jesus' name. And again, if naturally, some of us might not be affectionate. Some of us might not know how to hug or how to kiss, how to say I love you, how to admire you, looking beautiful. These are things we could learn because it's going to work for our relationship. Praise the Lord. We are humans. We want to see. We want to hear. We want to feel. Amen. And I pray the Lord will make this available for us in Jesus' name. Having look at love, the other one we want to look at is forgiveness. Matthew 6, 14 to 15. Forgiveness. Be... Praise the Lord. Matthew 6, 14 to 15. It says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Amen. I mentioned that because we are humans and because we are not brought up the same way, some of us, we can even get married to someone that is not from our tribe. Amen. We can have someone from the east getting married to someone from the west. And traditions may vary, beliefs, norms, all those things are part of what's made us who we are. Amen. And because we are being joined together with someone of different opinion, different upbringing, definitely misunderstanding will come. Amen. Do you agree? Misunderstanding will come. We will step on each other's toes. We will offend each other, but we must forgive. Amen. We must what? We must forgive. We must ready to be forgive. If there is anyone under the sound of the ministration this morning and you are holding grudges against your spouse, this is the time to let go and let God. Say to him or her, I have forgiven you. I said, I shared this thing during the first service that there was someone that really offended me and that was my uncle. And I said to myself, I won't forgive you. I won't forgive this man. I deleted his number from my phone. Even during the burial, I could see the hunger because he played a major part in the death of my mom. And that really got to me. And I said, no, I won't forgive you. But when the Holy Spirit ministered to me, because that was affecting me, and he says, your uncle has done this. But is it worth you going to hell for? Amen. He doesn't want it. And that was when I was like, no, nothing is worth me losing my place in heaven. So what is it? We just need to let go. Whatever bitterness it is, we need to let go. There was a place in the Bible when Peter asked Jesus, he said, how many times do you want me to forgive? Seven? Seven times seven? Seven times seven? But if you look at the outcome of how many times Jesus said you should forgive others, no human can offend you that much in a day. Amen. No human can offend you that much in a day. So you must be ready to let go because if you have grudges in your mind, in your heart, if you are still, you know, you are still um, basking in that bitterness, the Bible says your father will not forgive you. And if your father does not forgive you, you can't ask him anything. He won't do it. Praise the Lord. He won't do it. You want me to forgive you? Go and forgive your neighbor. You want me to forgive you? Go and forgive your husband. You want me to forgive you? Go and forgive your wife. Praise the Lord. I pray the grace for us to be able to let go and let God the Lord will release upon our lives in Jesus' name. We just need to let go. Please, by the mercies of God, I beg us. Because from the prayer point my sister read, she said the rate of divorce separate is so alarming. And it is true. It is so alarming. It is. And what are the reasons? It's unforgiveness. It's unforgiveness. But if you think not letting go is worth it to miss your place in heaven, be my guest. 
but I'm very sure it's not worth it. No matter what anyone is doing, no matter what your husband is doing, no matter what your wife is doing, it does not worth you not forgiving. And it does not worth it you missing your place or breaking that bond or that cord between you and your father. If you hold grudges, you don't have, you, 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 you don't have that right to go speak to God. What do you want to tell him? When he has forgiven you and given you salvation, now you are holding your brother's in your heart and you want to talk to him, he won't listen. The Lord will give us the grace to forgive in Jesus' name. The other one we looked at was communication. Amen. Communication allows us to express our thoughts, share information, and connect with each other. And I said, if you tell me a relationship that lasts communication, I will tell you that is a boring relationship very boring. My son will say, that is so boring. It means he's not, he's not excited because communication is very, very important. It's one of the key, one of the principles to have a very healthy relationship. I was asking my minister in charge of youth during the first service that, can he read my mind? Maybe you can read other people's mind. If you can read people's mind and tell, and tell what is in their mind, then probably we don't have need for communication. Even those, we that we study psychology, we could only predict. We won't be able to say, this is what you're thinking. So we need to talk. Praise the Lord. Tell your partner, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to yourself. Discuss. Agree. By the time you come together to discuss, that is when you can compromise. You say, I'm not taking this, I'm not taking it. Okay, let's come in the middle. What can you take? Praise God. So in the place of communication, relationship is being enhanced to be beautiful. If you look at that tree, there is a communication from the root to the leaf. If there is anyone that breach communication, then that path will wither. Because... There is a bridge in communication. But that communication from the root to the leaf to the true, to the, to the fruits, is what makes it beautiful. So communication is very, very important. Talk about your finances. Talk about the children. Talk about your parents. Talk about your job. I know there are some information that are confidential. I'm not saying you should go and share that with your partner because that is, not, that is not one of the things that contribute to having a healthy relationship. So I won't say talk about it. But talk about things that are important in that relationship. Talk about sex. Amen. I understand for our singles, you, you, you won't be able to talk about it. But during your um, counseling, I think it's part of the counseling process that you, be, you will be enlightened about sex. Talk about it. And singles, you are not allowed to have sex. Amen. Not until you are given that certificate. Because you are two bodies now. Amen. And he said, marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. If you break it, you are not only sinning against God, you are also committing sin against your body. But once you have that certificate that you have been pronounced man and wife, you are no longer two bodies. You are now what? Praise the Lord. And that is when you are now licensed to have sex. And if you are doing it, it is not too late. Amen. Yeah. If you are doing it, it is not what? It is not too late. Confess your sin. Repent and start on a clean slate. Yeah. Talk to your partner. We know we've been doing this. This is sin. We need to let go. Let's ask for forgiveness and let's start on a clean slate. Not until our wedding night. We are not having it. Amen. Hallelujah. So, like I said, that's just by the way. We need to communicate. Let's talk about things. Let's talk about anything that can help our relationship. Amen. The last one I'll talk about is prayers. Amen. First Thessalonians 5, 17. Prayers. The book of First Thessalonians 5, 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Amen. Pray without stopping. Pray without having a break. Pray always. Pray every day. And I want to encourage us, when we pray every day, please pray for your relationship. Let your relationship, let your marriage, let your home, let it be part of your prayer points. Because prayer is very, very important. Amen. Prayer is a spiritual bond and a godly 
healthy, um, that a godly and healthy relationship must have. It is a bond, and that bond must be intact. So praying is so important because it's the engine of real relationship. We say godly relationship. Godly relationship. So that godly needs to be inculcated in that relationship. And that godly is God. And you can't say you're having a godly relationship without talking to, amen, without talking to that God every day concerning that relationship. Hallelujah. So we should be ready to fight for our relationship on our knees and to stand and conquer when the storm arises. Amen. We need to pray. There are some things that is beyond doing it physically. There are some things that we cannot just undo with our own understanding. We need to take it back to the altar of that relationship. And um, the illustration in um, um, the illustration when the storm arises, when Jesus was in the boat, Jesus was in the boat quite all right, but the storm came and challenged while knowing that Christ is still in the boat. There is something there. He wants to know if they will speak to Jesus or not. Because if they refuse to speak to him, maybe that would have been their peril. But this why the father Christ was in that boat. They still need to go talk to him. So if our relationship is built on Christ the solid rock, if Jesus is in that relationship, we still need to talk to him. Amen. I will say, God does not put notes. He will only step in when you ask him to do. So we need to pray. And talking about prayer cannot be overemphasized. Hallelujah. So it is important to have a strong spiritual connection with one another. Apart from praying to God, we need to pray together as well. Amen. I understand that the way this country is programmed because for myself I do a day shift my husband does nights so whenever is um, working night and I'm working day it means we don't sleep together and when it's coming is when I'm going amen but we normally seize that opportunity when it's not working and we sleep together we 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 make sure we pray together and when we are apart as well please when you are apart also inculcates the habit of praying for one another. Whenever you are praying, pray for your husband, pray for your wife, pray for your spouse. And when you are together, join hands together and pray. He say one, we chase a thousand, but two, we walk, we chase two thousand. And the, sorry, ten thousand, thank you. Two, we chase ten thousand. It's not even multiplied by two. So we can look, we can see that mathematics is, it's very, very alarming. So let's hold our hands together and pray together. If we pray in agreement together, I tell you, no storm will come that you will not be able to withstand. So prayer is very, very important. And prayerlessness leaves the, um, the wall of a relationship cracked. And there is a saying in my place that, Tio giri oba lanu, alang ba ole wobe. It says, if a wall is not cracked, there is no way lizards will penetrate. So we need to salvage that wall. We need to make sure that it is not cracked. And I pray that the Lord will uphold our relationship in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever we are experiencing right now, I pray that the Lord God Almighty will surface in Jesus' name. It will give us a healthy home. It will give us a godly home in the name of Jesus. We will enjoy our marriage. Praise the Lord. I know I have four seconds, but I could remember then when I was into counseling in one of my churches then. There was this old woman, when we were talking, she said, I would say, ha, mommy, do you normally hug your husband? Did you do this? I'm too old for that. Say, you're not too old. You're not too old to enjoy your marriage. You're not too old to be happy. Please, let's be happy. Let's go, let's go of every bitterness. I think that is just the major importance. Thing that we need to look at when a relationship is not functioning or when it's leading to divorce or when it's not healthy. When we are ready to let go and we're ready to come together, show ourselves love, talk to each other, we will definitely have a blissful home. And I pray for us, as many that are married here, we will enjoy our marriage to the last in the name of Jesus.
We will not mourn each other in Jesus' name. I pray for all our singles brothers and sisters as well, that the Lord will choose for you in the name of Jesus. And you end up well in Jesus' name. Shall we bow down our head? And let's pray one prayer. That God, please, I crave for a healthy home. I crave for a healthy relationship. Please, God, grant me the grace to be able to be able to nourish my relationship, to be healthy in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. In that same vein, can we just stretch our hands across to our sister and just thank God for our life. Let's bless her. For God himself has used her to bless us. So let's stretch our hands across to her and say, Father, let's speak words of blessings into our life and into our own marriage. Father, we thank you for your daughter whom you've used this morning as an instrument to bless your children. King of glory, we bless your name because we know this day you will increase her. You will uphold her. You will uplift her home in the name of Jesus. She will continually be a blessing to our generation and generations beyond in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah, church. We know what time it is. It is offering, tithe and offering time. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Leviticus, chapter 27, verse 30, And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord, and it is holy unto the Lord. Praise God. This morning, I would like to crave the indulgence of the tithers to please, if you have your tithes this morning, just walk up to the front here with your ties so we can have um, a pastor pray for you. Do we have tithers in the house, those who have come with their ties this morning? Praise the Lord. All right. Um, in the absence of that, can we have um, the church account displayed? Yeah, thank you. So um, the offering envelopes, I believe, have been passed across. Please package out your offerings. And for those who want to give online, kindly check the screens in front of you and package your offerings with gladness in your heart. Praise the Lord. Choir. Praise the Lord. Let's rise as we give our offering unto God. I'm gonna dance and praise Him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one.
Alléluia. God bless you, choir. Thank you so much. Let's pray on our offering. Everlasting Father, King of all grace, we thank you this morning. We bless you for the strength you've given unto us to make wealth. We thank you because out of the abundance you've blessed us with, have we come with you, have we come with this morning to honor you. Lord, we ask you to accept our offering unto you as a sweet-smelling savor in the name of Jesus. King of glory, we appreciate you because you will continue to teach us on how to make wealth. And we will continually honor you all the days of our lives. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. You may please take your seats. This morning we have some very special guests in our midst who have come to worship with us this morning. Please, if today is your first Sunday in this auditorium that you've come to worship at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Victory Center, please, could you just give the Lord a wave this morning if this is your first time worshiping in this church with us? Can you please give a wave, a wave offering? Hallelujah. First timers, if this is your first time worshiping with us, can you please give the Lord a wave? All right, church, I think we've got some assignments. Perhaps the pastorate should look at encouraging us to go onto the streets and evangelize so we can win souls for Christ. Praise the Lord. All right, so we're going to be having our announcements, media. Oh, have we got a first timer? Oh, thank you, ma. All right, so please, choir, can we just welcome her with a song? Praise the Lord. Yes, we love you, 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 we love the Lord. we love you, we love you, we love you, we the Lord. we love you, 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 the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Victory Center. It's such a pleasure to have you in our midst this morning. As the Lord himself has ordered your step, we pray that he will do that which only him can do in your life in the name of Jesus. Praise God. You're welcome, ma. I believe a sleep has been passed on to you. Kindly fill that up for us and hold on at the end of the service as our welcome team will come over to say hi and to give you the welcome treats that we have for you. God bless you, ma, in Jesus' name. The Men's Fellowship. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to church. Please listen to the following announcements. Every Sunday we have two services. The first service starts by 9.30am and ends at 10.45am. Thereafter we have Sunday school that runs until quarter past 11. This is then followed by our second service that starts by 11.15am and ends at 12.45pm. Throughout the week we have our daily prayers at 6pm. This holds on the free conference call app from Mondays to Fridays. On Monday, we have prayers in the Holy Ghost. Tuesdays is our faith clinic. Wednesdays are Deegan Deep, which is our Bible study. And then on Thursday, we have Holy Communion and Deliverance prayers. And on Friday, we have songs of praise with hymns and psalms. On Saturday, we meet physically in the church parish from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. for prayers. The login details for the free conference call app are on the screen. The Hygiene Bank, a community initiative that provides hygiene, personal care and household cleaning products, holds every third Thursday of each month. The next one holds on the 18th of April from 4pm to 6pm. Sex is one of the most avoided topics in Christendom. 
Who created sex? What is love? What is an intimate relationship? How is love related to sex? Are there any correlations between any of these? Do you want to learn how to speak to your children about sex? Then join us to talk, chat and explore God's perspective on sex and how it affects us as Christians in this day and age. The Youth and Young Adults Fellowship Yaya have a program tagged Love, Sex and Relationship. It holds on Friday the 19th of April at 6.30pm in the church parish. See you there. The police surgery now holds every third Sunday of each month. The next one holds on the 21st of April. The police surgery is an initiative that provides support to individuals and families who have questions or perhaps concerns that they would like to chat about with the police. Please note the police surgery holds after the second service on the day. This announcement is for all workers. Please note that the RCCG Festival of Life Workers Rally holds on Thursday the 25th of April. It is a multi-site event in which case our parish would be one of the viewing centres. Further details will be passed on on our WhatsApp platform. For all job references, kindly use the email address shown on the screen info at rccglincoln.org.uk You may reach the parish on any of the following numbers on the screen. If anyone is interested in joining any department in church, kindly approach any of the ministers, heads of department or pastor. On the screen are a list of all the departments that you can join. God bless you. If anyone wishes to see the pastor regarding child dedication, naming ceremony, wedding ceremony, blessing of marriage or for any other reason, please speak to the pastor's personal assistant, Brother Obina Imenike or Brother Kayode Dada. As you go into this week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God bless you. Have a great week. If anyone wishes to see the pastor regarding child dedication, naming ceremony, wedding ceremony, blessing of marriage or for any other reason, please speak to the pastor's personal Praise the Lord. How many of you have been blessed so far this morning? I was blessed by everything. Can we give a round of applause to the youth church? <laughs> Hallelujah. From the drama, I, I, I don't want peace. To the children talking about the future. Praise the Lord. All right, just to emphasize a few announcements. And then we'll be, can we have the, the celebration cake to come forward? We didn't do that last week. Let's, can we do that right away? Uh, protocol team. All right, on the 27th to 31st August, there's going to be RCCG International Teenagers Camp. So teenagers from all over Europe are meeting in the UK, all from RCCG. So if you have teenage children, please make sure they attend. The teenagers here are doing a good job. So, And if you know any teenagers that are close to you, that are willing to attend, make sure they attend. I think the the, the cost price is £150 for about four or five days stretch. So I think that's not too much. Praise the Lord. So um, if we have the cake here available, um, if you are born in the month of April, April is your birthday, April is your wedding anniversary, please come forward. We'll pray for you. You'll cut the cake. And then we'll round up the service with our prayers. Do we have the protocol bringing the cake? So if your birthday is in April, please step forward. Let's pray for you. Wedding anniversary in April. Can the choir come up, please? 
birthdays, April, wedding anniversaries, April. of the gaps and try to stretch your hand towards the cake. Uh, if you can hold the knife, I believe there's a knife there. Oh, there's no knife. Okay. Okay, the knife is coming. All right. So if you can just stretch forth your hand towards the cake and um, just hold your hands as you can. All right. So I don't know where the knife is. Okay, we'll cut it like that without the knife. <laughs> we'll just act as if we have knife. Praise the Lord. All right. So, I we would mention the name of Jesus. We'll spell Jesus. Somebody give me a J. A. An E. E. S. S. U, U S. S and what does that stand for? Jesus. Praise the Lord. Can the congregation stretch forth their hands to these ones? Let's just pray for them. Birthdays and wedding anniversaries. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you for these ones. We pray that as they celebrate in your presence today, celebration will not cease in their lives in Jesus' name. As you celebrate, people will celebrate you. People will celebrate your hard work. People will celebrate everything that concerns you. If you have children, people will celebrate your children. People will celebrate your spouses. People will celebrate your parents. And everything that concerns you, the Lord will perfect in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you. Happy birthday. Happy wedding anniversary. You do well, you take care of me. All right, can we be on our feet as we take our final prayers, brethren? All right, let's just, um, before we pray, please, the men's meeting will be taking place here on the 20th of april and it's titled it's titled dimensions of divine dominion part two please endeavor to attend praise the lord
Shall we just lift up our voice and begin to appreciate God for this morning? Let's thank God for His grace. Thank Him for how the service started. Thank Him for the amazing youth choir. Thank Him for how He has helped us in the drama, in the teaching, in the prayers, in the spoken word. Thank Him. Bless His holy name. Worship the King of Kings. Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. Thank him for the week that is ahead of you. Thank him because he's about to do mighty things. He's about to do glorious things. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we put up our reflective verse? 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 8. 1 Samuel 30 verse 8. We'll read it as a congregation and we'll use it to pray. So shall we read? One, two, go. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. The Lord is saying, you shall surely overtake and without fail recover all. We are going to go to the Lord in prayer. Just declare into your week that in this week, as I pursue the things that are ahead of me, I will recover, I will overtake, I will receive, I will succeed, I will make progress, I will attain my goals. I will reach out. I will be blessed of God. I will be increased. My expectations will never be cut off. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Please go ahead and begin to pray and call upon the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, I just want you to take your personal prayers to God. It's time for you to pray for yourself. Your personal prayers. Just begin to pray. Whatever it is that bothers your mind, whatever it is that troubles you, that thing that you are trusting God for, please go ahead and present it to the Lord now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the Sunday service. Thank you, O Lord, for the youth service. We pray, Holy Spirit, as we go to our respective homes, please go with us in Jesus' name. Father, O Lord, this week is blessed. This week we encounter you in great dimensions. This week we encounter your favor. We encounter your mercy. We encounter your guidance. And we thrive by running after you. And we come closer and closer to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Before we share the grace, I just want to mention... Uh, our pastor is not uh, uh, around today. She's gone to Nigeria um, to, you know, attend the funeral of her mom. I spoke to her this morning, and I believe by now she'll be airborne. Praise the Lord. So we we'll just pray and say, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord grant you peace. Shall we share the grace? Surely. God bless you and have a wonderful week.
Thank you.